Hey you guys, it's your boy Kel Mitchell and I am here at Spirit Food Christian Center with Pastor Gary Ziegler. <laughs> this is my pastor and I had to put this show together, it's called Ask Pastor Ziegler. Because I feel that every time I come in, the pastor is a question, he always answers it so very, very well, and he keeps it 100%, he keeps it 100, and he also backs it up in the Bible as well. So I thought that we should definitely put this viral, bring it out to all of our audience, our friends, and help them with the questions that they need answers to. So you guys sent in questions for Pastor Ziegler. You sent it via Facebook, Twitter, all over the place. So we're going to ask them for you right now. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the questions that have been sent in. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit who's our counselor and our teacher. He is the spirit of truth. He'll lead us and guide us and direct us in all the word of truth. We thank you for magnifying Jesus, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. First question is from Deval Lee, and his question is, why doesn't the Old Testament Messiah speak about the second coming? Well, the scriptures are very clear about prophecy, and Jesus is a prophet, and he is the sent one to us. Now, when he says, why doesn't the Old Testament speak of the second coming or the Old Testament prophet? Well, Jesus would be considered, while he walked upon the earth, the Old Testament prophet. But he was the prophet. He was the Messiah himself. Now, he spoke about his second coming. He spoke about how that Daniel's abomination of desolation would take place and how that believers those who were Jews who were looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, how they were to look for his coming. However, he did not speak of in the Old Testament per se about the coming away or the catching away of the body of Christ. And the reason he didn't speak about the catching away of the body of Christ is because the body of Christ is called the church. And the church would not have a reference point because the people didn't know anything about the new creation people that were going to come. Mm -hmm. Now, Duvall has a second question as well. If the Messiah is from the bloodline of David on the father's side, how can that be if he is born from a virgin? He has the bloodline of David on his mother's side. His blood was actually from God the Father through the Holy Spirit impregnating Mary. That's the reason why Jesus is virgin born. His blood type is determined by the Father. As all children, the blood type is determined by the Father. So without Jesus actually coming from the cohabitation of Mary and Joseph, then he was born of a virgin who had not known a man. Now, his blood type then would be known as one who was without sin. So his blood was clean, his blood was pure. His blood was even as the first Adam was when he was created from the dust of the earth. So Jesus was full-fledged, all man, just like the first Adam was. Even though Joseph was called his father by others, he was his supposed father because his actual father was God. Let me grab my Bible. So you back that up in the Bible. You have a verse for that? Yes, let's okay. look at it. Sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. And notice in verse 27, it goes back to that first question that was asked about Jesus having a father, but yet how could he be considered in the line of David? It says, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. 
He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now he calls him the father of David because Mary was of the lineage of David, and Jesus was truly in the line of David, even though Joseph was not the one who impregnated Mary, but yet Joseph was in the line of David as well. So just being born in their family put him in a position of being called one who was born under the lineage of David. Now verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now, when she said, I know not a man, that meant that she was never intimate with any man at all. How can I give birth to a child when I have not known a man? So others have tried to translate the scripture and say that Mary was just a maiden and not a virgin. This says, I know not a man, which classifies her as a person who was a virgin. Now, verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, that cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived as a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1 verse 38 says, And Mary said, Behold the, behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And we know that Mary was impregnated by the ability of the Holy Spirit at the moment she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. Somebody out there got a dream. Somebody out there got a dream, yeah. Everybody got one. Everybody got one. Of you say, I would like to have a personal relationship with God the Father. I want to pray this prayer. Pray with us. Repeat these words after me. We're going to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you're going to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's pray. Dear God, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is born of a virgin that you raised him from the dead that you sent him so that I could be redeemed from my sins Jesus I believe with all my heart that you are raised from the dead I confess with my mouth you are now my Lord and my Savior come into my heart wash me clean with your blood I will live for you all the days of my life. Dear God, my Father, thank you for being my Father because I am now your child through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. I call upon his name. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't listen to what people say because they don't want to see you make it anyway. Stay strong, especially when times get rough and people don't laugh